Hello there, welcome. Today we're having a look at another one of the new Mist Champions. This time it's Enigma and I don't have one. I have two games for you today, which really showcase how good this hero is. First off, we're playing against Bolton. Um, truly not one of the easy matchups, since they can play quite aggressive. They have attack reacts and multiple chain links each turn. So we won't be able to keep our auras alive for long. Um, but what's nice for us here, turn one, Bolton decides to give his action point away so we can cheat an aura on the board uh, already, draw up and then get the attack value out of this. Um, besides that, we can also flip a cheat this turn. Attack with spears and put the shimmers down. Now I'm running blue Gogan attacks in this deck because for one day are blue, <laughs> three blocks, activate um, the transcend cards. And it seems like Enigma wants to get the um wants to get the opponent as low as possible, as quickly as possible, because, because once they are low and forced to block, they can they don't have the ability to clear the board too well anymore. And that's when you just escalate and generate insanely insane amounts of value really now as enigma into those aggressive matchups that can clear your board you always need to think about when you just need to concede your board and when it's actually worth defending <coughs> um, at this point i'm pretty sure that we won't be able to just defend our board with a four card hand uh, into Bolton's five card hand. So I might as well just get the maximum block value out of out of the board and also out of my hand. I don't want to immediately um, just play out that four card hand. Ideally, I just want to set up another five card hand, then start building a board again, swinging, then <clears throat> deciding whether I want to block or um, concede that board again and then repeat that cycle over and over. Unfortunately, we, with the cards we have in hand, we can't really block out um, the second Lumina swing there. So, Bolton will get the on it, but we're quite ahead on life. Um, and there was like the possibility to just block with the Ripple away, I think we had in hand. Um, but then again, against Bolton, attack actions become less valuable uh, in blocking because when he charges, um, the attacks get plus one when you block them with an attack action. Now, though, we actually do have something nice to set up here. Uh, unfortunately, Bolton also has quite a nice turn. Um, I do want to either get a aura into my arsenal or the CNC. Because if there's a scene scene parked in my arsenal and then draw into, let's say, two auras with the blue and something else, I can put the two auras out, maybe attack with one of them and then throw the scene scene after and either we get their arsenal and push damage or we get cards out of the hand. Either way, they won't be able to clear our board as efficiently as they would be able to do so otherwise. So I think, um, yeah, for now, I shouldn't have to actually blocked uh, or if I block, I should block with two attack actions at once because then the attack only gets buffed once still and I get the max value out of this. Um, I do end up blocking with the CNC here though because there's no good way for me to get the transcend card out of my hand unfortunately. So I put this into the arsenal. And now we just on block out value again. We don't even draw into another blue so just keep getting that block out of our hand and now while we're able to block that illuminate out <laughs> uh, we're stuck with the red and can't do anything on our turn that happens with enigma um not too often but it does um does happen and it's not the worst thing um because in like opposite to uh tempo based decks we are fine with just a very controlled game plan and once we have our pop of turn we will generate a lot of value value so that we can forget about these the, the, this one card that we weren't able to play out here um so now we do actually have a 
very aura heavy hand and while we while we can't use that that card we have in our arsenal um i still want to play out this this hand here and not just use it for defensive values um unfortunately for us uh, now is just another turn where bolton really pops off with two of his power cards the v and the lumina so we're quite behind at this point but we ourselves are now able to pull off quite a strong turn um the action we just played makes us a spectral shield and if we don't have any auras we get three counters on it so while this is only a two card five basically with the what we create we can do more crazy shit with the with the counters um because now we play the cat and the cat can just eat as many counters as it wants and then it will attack with the counters again so now it's already a three cut three cut ten and then we can use our tunic to put even another ward out here and then i'm using the cat's ability so I'm, if i'm saying the cat i'm referring to restless coalescence here um to vomit out a spectral shield <laughs> And now we've got quite a good board established here. And this should now ideally be our swing turn. Um, if we can keep a little bit of that board and draw into a good hand, we can really get tempo here and push some damage. And fortunately for us, we did draw into a good hand. So now it's sort of... Now we again, again need to... to, to wager. But what is the plan here? Do we just concede the whole board and play uh, out a new one if we do we can get a mirror guy out and then attack and play a miraging metamorph afterwards so we can push quite a bit of damage and then we're sort of equal in life uh, on the other hand with the well the bot with the bot we have right now we can't really do too much anyways because after this turn there's only one counter left on the restless anyways so i think we're fine with just um, letting everything die here. Um, this this transcend card in our arsenal is really sort of stuck. We don't really have a good opportunity to play blue card and get the chi value off it. I'm deciding to actually pitch a blue card into the NPC here so we get the value out of the Vaining Vengeance. And now that's already Bolton's turn. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't actually have to be. He can give go again here. But we might be able to just keep our cat alive here. And now we've also kind of fixed our awkward hand. And now, yeah, while not doing much with that hand, that was possibly quite, quite good. Uh, we kept our life up. We now have a great arsenal. And we got more value out of the, the aura. And now we actually have a even better hand. That is now the, the point where I probably want to use my headpiece. Just push as much damage as possible and get a big board. Now, ideally, you want to draw that hand even a bit later when they are, let's say, 5 HP lower. So you really get them to that point where they need to start blocking you. But even now, we will we will have a big turn here. Now, once again, we can do the cat trick. Play it. Get all the counters. Take again for a not small amount and then attack another one um, with another big number here i decide to not use the cat's ability and vomit out a special right vomit out a spectral shield here because um bolton only kept three cards i believe so i'm not not expecting much damage from him back here so i'd rather keep the plus uh, one counters on there for, for now Uh, unfortunately, blocking 4 isn't too easy. The Rage Spectre we will probably not have any use for. So yeah, with... Oh, actually, I, I lied. It's quite easy with the Cat's ability, of course. And then we can just block 3 more. Oh, actually, blocking 3 more uh, does become 
a little awkward again. So what I'm guessing I'll do is just put spears and haste bending in front. And then we can us oh maybe that way, okay. Now in retrospect, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think in retrospect putting the haste bending in front was the more the, the better play. Then we can still attack with the cat with tunic and play the and Arsenal the mirror guy. On the other hand, um now we can lay out the haste bending, but I think at this point in the game it won't get us too much value. Okay, now very unfortunate that the only three block we have in hand is a attack a direct it is. Um let's see what else can we do. We probably will get rid of our tunic here. Okay, we could have also gotten rid of the cat, but yeah. And the reason I'm sacrificing Miraga is here, he won't probably get any more counters, so he's basically useless, and now we at least get the spectral shield from haste bending. And now the question is again between dropping an aura down or attacking. I once again don't think dropping the aura will get us enough um, value um, when we're that low HP. So I'd rather get this, these attacks in. And now I'm using that cat because with a full 5 card hand of, from Bolton, I don't think we will be able to keep it alive. And at this point, unfortunately, I think we're kind of in a losing spot now. Bolton has 6 um, soul and he has quite a few cards that can really push some damage with soul. That's Beacon of Victory and Attack React that can give us 1 per soul you sacrifice for it. And then also the Celestial Cataclysm which needs 3 soul but then comes in for 0, 7 go again. And we can't set up another combo again. I think um, Bolton will present too much damage for that. So yeah, those 5 HP would have really mm, made a difference here. Yeah and forcing him to block and keeping more of our board alive. It's still a, a possible for him to break a bit, so I have not lose, lost hope yet. Hmm. Now, once again, unfortunately, Dustbane will get buffed if we block with an attack action, but okay, we can sacrifice a spectral shield for that oh and another lumina okay, but surely we can get that blocked out yeah and if we do that with the footsteps and the waning vengeance we even get another spectral shield And now this, unfortunately, right, he can still give go again to this. Um, since my board is irrelevant at this point, I rather... Okay, well, there's, there's again two trains of thought here. I rather, I think in retrospect, I rather keep the sink below and try to, you know, have a bigger turn at one point, get a bit of tempo um, back with more cards to block. On the other hand, me keeping a spectral shield alive now does get us one value. Okay, now Bolton only on a four card hand. We could be lucky and maybe find a way back into the game. Not with the hand we have currently though. Oh, and now he actually finds a beacon of victory, so he will if he buffs it by 6, we are straight up dead, right? Um, fortunately for us, he does not do so, but he gets the Celestial Cataclysm, so we're at least facing another 7. Um, that we could just about survive, but then unfortunately we, we do have a non-block. So that might be all she wrote for, for this game. Uh, fortunately, I have another one in the pipeline that might just be a little more Enigma favored. So yeah, that's three, and we're just exactly dead. Oh, maybe we're more than exactly dead. Okay, so that's Bolton. Probably not a good matchup, but on the other hand, um, Bolton won't be as popular in the upcoming meta. Um, 
quite a bit of warrior hate we had in, in the MST set. Okay, and now we're back against a Zen. Now surely you'd think, um, and I thought so as well, Zen ninjas aren't good matchups for, for Enigma, but it turns out if you play them kind of cautiously and maybe they don't completely high roll you, there's actually a good chance of you winning those games. So we don't have a, a aura to drop down on their first turn, but we can keep the Rage Spectre, which is really strong if it's the first aura you play. Um, you can just uh, attack for it with it for six. Then also get the Transcend because it's a blue. Um, little mistake by me here. After dropping the Rage Spectre, I should have already played the Transcend God, attack with the Spectre Sheet first and then with the Rage Spectre. Uh, might have been a little AFK there. But um, we are we, we, we're back at it now and... Zen already decided to block a bit, so nothing too big coming in here from him. Um, interestingly enough, Zen does brick every now and then, which really um, runs into um, Enigma's favor. Because if he bricks when we just established the board, it's just huge. Yeah. Oh, we pressed another um, 11 damage, I believe, here. And now. Even if Zen clears our board, we are right where we want to be. We can just take a bit of damage back and we've traded him further down. And then at one point, we'll just pop our headpiece when he's quite low. And we will force him to block and then he won't anymore be able to, to clear our board. Again, the cat coming in clutch here with the big counter combo. Though, again, in retrospect, there is also the possibility of just keeping that uh, cat for the arsenal and just completely sacrificing the board. And then waiting for a better situation where we can for sure keep it alive and attack with it. The way this turns out, we might just uh, get only one spectral shit out of it. Which is still a one cut three, so that's fine. Um, now we need to be careful about his Tiger Swipe here. It can get buffed to 5 and it can also get the buff from his arms, which is Tiger Stripe Shuko, I believe it's called. And if Tiger Stripe Shuko buffs a, a an attack, then the damage it deals gets unpreventable. So that would just then clear our board completely if we don't block it out. So I might just well just sacrifice it now. Get the full block value out of it. Interestingly enough, he doesn't um, decide to go with the Tiger's um, Swipe on hit, so we can just let that through. Come back with a CNC, either leak damage, which would be great, or get a bit of cards. No, we leak damage. And now hmm, we are we, we draw two nice Arsenal pieces here to swing back tempo in our favor when we want to. It's either the Banning Vengeance Aura or the CNC. Okay, and since he's not really doing any damage, we might as well just um, try to go for a cheeky CNC into Aura here. Um, I'm doing something that. Hmm, I'm still not, not quite sure on wh whether it's correct. It's I, I have resources floating and I or rather to spare and I want to use them efficiently and I pop the the hands right now. So I get the plus one counter on the logo and also the go again so I can follow it up with the CNC. Now Zen decides that this will now he will just pop off turn. He uses his um, setup equipments and gets a seven um, hard hand now. CNC, of course, is quite huge then. And we get a hand which we basically just want to block with. But yeah, we sacrificed our hands to push a little bit more damage. Make our turn a little less awkward. Which is great.
Now this we can just sink away. Then we can perf could perfectly get the free free block on the Vaining Vengeance here. Um Right, or oh, now just block out the Molen key in combination with the aura. And now okay, we don't have a bot, we don't have a hand, but we survived his big damage turn without taking any damage. <laughs> Funnily enough, and now it's time for us to take some damage on hopefully his smaller turn. And then we set up a combo ourselves. Unfortunately, not the best hand to combo, but that's fine. We can still play it safe. We could just block um, block out completely with our hand. Maybe even the um, the aura here. Then just throw back the miraging metamorph with the tunic. That's a one card seven, if you want to think about it like that. Because he Zen tends to... No, actually, Zen, Zen just ended his turn there. Which is quite nice for us. We don't even need to use the... Tunic counter. Now they are going for a wind chakra without transcending. Usually you play the, the wind chakra to get a, a blue starter, and then you play a transcend card, and the wind chakra then buffs for free. Now the hand we have right now is really good for comboing. If we survive this turn of Zen, which it does seem like he can't offer too much damage. We can play the mirror guy with four counters. We can play the waxing specter. We can attack with both and send the command and conquer afterwards. Then basically Zen won't have a hand at all. And be really low as well. So we will for sure keep at least one of those auras for the next turn. The that all you got I blocked with earlier will give us a draws another card because it blocked a an attack that only came in with a with a, an attack value of one and yeah Zen can surprisingly push a lot of damage here still but as I said we should be completely fine with that we just start with the mirror guy here that will attack for a very casual 8. And then we'll push 10 more damage this turn. And yeah, Zen won't have anything to, to get back at us with. Even the Zen state he creates with his, with his chest here doesn't do much. I can also just not attack with the CNC here and keep that around for the next turn. And now to add insult to injury, we <laughs> even draw the cat. So we could, after all those attacks, come in with a, let's see, two with a one cost eight. Enigma actually yeah, pretty strong in, in quite a few matchups you, you wouldn't uh, expect. I, I highly recommend playing here. I've put the decklist in the description. I've also played with the other Mist Heroes. I will play more of them tomorrow. There's a very fun new one coming up. And I'll see you then.